Professor Yerabali, what are we going to learn today? Uh, we're going to do something exciting. We're going to look at Lab 10. Lab 10 in 319K is a game. So we're going to look at the, uh, the requirements for Lab 10, how to make it fun. So if you go to 319K website on the Lab Materials tab, you'll see a new Lab 10 document. And in this document, uh, we highlight uh, all the details, but we're, in this video, we'll just focus on the, um, the, the basic requirements for all projects. Uh, so there's a listing called base requirements, and I'm going to walk you through these requirements um, by drawing them out. So here's our, here are our requirements. Um, so um, John, uh, this, this project is lab 10. Uh, it doesn't have to be a game. Uh, it can be a game or it can be something else. What, what do you think that something else could be, for example? Well, one of the options you're going to have is to essentially build a ventilator to help with the COVID-19. Wow, that sounds exciting. I, I, yeah. uh, that project will, will have uh, the same requirements that it'll meet and the base requirements are highlighted here. So the, the, in a nutshell, these requirements are telling you that you are going to use your Launchpad microcontroller to interface with an LCD display. The LCD display can be either the ST7735 or it can be the Nokia display. And you're gonna interface one of those devices. Uh, you're gonna also make sure that you have at least two buttons. This will be two buttons. These are two button inputs, one and two. Uh, we require that you have an analog input. These are digital inputs. And you have to have one analog input and the analog input we suggest is, uh, is simply a, 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 a potentiometer uh, you can also use a joystick a joystick is basically two potentiometers uh, in the x and y direction you could do that if you want um, and uh, what we what we require you to do besides the hardware, besides this, what is, about the sound? Is, is the sound. You need a 4-bit or any any n-bit DAC. Uh, those of you who already uh, did a 6-bit DAC can use it. If you have only a 4-bit DAC, that's fine. The game is still going to be playable, eminently playable, and you will interface it. And um, and your, um, your speaker doesn't have to be headphones. It could be an external speaker that is powered. Um, so um, so while this is the basic structure, we want to make sure that you uh, fulfill some requirements. So let's uh, let's see what those requirements are. One of those requirements is that there be at least three sprites or images. So as part of your application, I'm going to call that an app. Um, the app could be, again, as John suggested, it could be a, a game um, or it could be a ventilator. Uh, and if somebody has another proposal that's not a ventilator, that is not a game, you're more than welcome to do it. There is a proposal process which, by which we, um, the, the TAs and, uh, and the instructors will review your request and we will approve it. So you just follow the proposal process and you can suggest any project you want. So one of the requirements in the graphics is that there be at least three sprites slash images. Um, sprites are simply objects in your in your uh, application. Um, this can be, uh, for example, a moving object. Maybe it's a ball that moves, or maybe it is a character that moves in your game, or it could be a rocket ship that moves in your game. Doesn't matter what it is. There have to be three sprites, um, um, and they should actually move. So they have to move in relation to the user input. So something in the user input or time should cause them to move. There must be sounds appropriate for the game. Um, there and the sound that we are going to be uh, the it's the best, uh, the simplest way to do sound is for us to use. Uh, uh, there is a video that talks about how to get a uh, get any wave file from uh, anywhere on the internet and use that as the basis for producing sound. Um, and um, and John is going to do another video. It's probably already there, which shows you how you can get your own. Um, own images, whether they are uh, GIFs or JPEGs or whatever that might be, and convert them into a bitmap 
uh, which is then loaded as an image into your into your um, into your project. Um, that way, you can use all the colors. So yeah. you can you can use all, all the, the colors, colors, and it can be a very personalized thing. It um, we've had we've had people in the past even draw their own art and then uh, use that as part of their game. Um, so that is the that is the sound part, the three sprites. And then uh, there must be some sort of a text display. That's where the score comes in. Um, the score, we're saying score here if it's a game, but if it's a ventilator, it could be any statistic. It could be a score or any, any statistic that you're trying to report, any statistic or data that you're trying to report. So basically images and uh, and numbers and text yes images and text text could be numbers uh, it could be uh, a plot right john yep, yep. yeah um, the other requirement uh, that we have is that there be at least two interrupts so um, clearly you already know from from uh, doing lab six uh, that the sound um, in, in lab six you did sound using a cystic interrupt um, you can use cystic interrupt if you want, um, but uh, you can also use the timer interrupt, which we have a video that uh, talks about about this. Or you can also make your buttons be interrupt based. Um, they don't have to be polling. They can be polling based, but if you want to meet the requirements of the at least two interrupts and you're running out of ideas, then you can just make your buttons be interrupt based. Um, the game must be uh, both simple and learn to learn and fun to play. Uh, this is because at the end, the end goal of this, uh, this is the exciting part, is that um, other students get to play your game, and if it's fun, they're gonna they're gonna enjoy it, and um, and uh, you will you will um, get more likes on your uh, on the posting of your video. Um, the last requirement here is uh, is this uh, the last requirement um, is the uh, that we want we want to make our game more um, quote unquote uh, international um, and to do that we want it to be multilingual so uh, you choose the language you want and um, and have some part of your game um, have uh, have multiple languages and you can choose any language um, and there is uh, there is a description about this on in the lab 10 document that shows how how you can um, how you can make your um, your text uh, change um, to different languages as you choose uh, John you do you want to add something about the international part so there's some special characters um, yeah. in the ASCII uh, in the ASCII table from the numbers 128 to 255 that lets you do uh, some international characters. Now it's not too good with uh, Chinese or or uh, or Japanese, but pretty good with Portuguese and and Spanish and French. Uh, so those romantic languages, there are character sets uh, in on your in your software already. Uh, that allow you to, to output uh, special characters to the screen. Yeah. All right, so um, so in a nutshell, this project uh, is going to be give you some some creative license to to get to exercise your um, creativity. Um, but we want to make sure that everybody does uh, does uh, uh, a good job. So we want to put some baseline requirements. Um, so the there will be a regular checkout process and and there's more details about the competition in the lab document. Mm, I can't wait. All right.